Absolutely. All right, super. So we are already into day three. Uh, and uh, some of you actually asked me, hey, I, I can't attend all the sessions. I'm in Australia, I'm in Tokyo, I'm in Canada. Uh, you know, wherever you are, whichever time zone, don't don't worry. We've, we're going to be, uh, you know, of course, if you can't attend the live, we actually have the recordings. Plus, uh, each of our guests is uh, going to be writing out a guest blog on this conversation that we're having and also embedding the video as well as some goodies over there. For example, Lorenzo, who came on the first day, spoke about review minings. He'll be sharing the review analysis templates that a bunch of you asked about. It'll be there on the blog too. So just in case you miss it live, we got you. Uh, so with that said, let's dive into today's topic. Um, uh, it's a very interesting angle for me on how to leverage the subtle art of persuasion to actually drive tangible conversion in your online store. And I'm very happy to grab this opportunity to speak to Marty. Uh, Marty is a seasoned expert and president at Site Tuners. He and his team have actually helped many, many businesses from e-commerce to subscription um, uh, to, to in actually increase their conversion rates by at least 25% in under six months. And that's that's a crazy timeline, guys. So so a very warm welcome, uh, Marty. And uh, we'll get started with a quick introduction, if you can share about what you do and why is it important for e-commerce teams? Okay, fair enough. So um, uh, my team and I, uh, we actually describe ourselves as the online persuasion people. Yeah, because it's all about getting people to feel comfortable and take action on a website. And for e-commerce, when somebody lands on a website, um, they ask themselves three questions. Am I in the right place? How do I feel about this? And that's important that how do I feel about this? And what am I supposed to do here? And those last two questions are really form the basis of all the persuasion. All right. And so we've been doing this since 2002. I think the last time we checked, we increased the revenue across all of our clients by an additional like one point five billion dollars, you know, in aggregate across all of them. Yeah. Now, in fairness, some of them are really large. So, you know, you do 25 percent of someone's doing large sums of money that really adds up quickly. Right. So. Anyway, no, so, but, but that that's a crazy number. That's a crazy number to grapple your head around. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so thank you for having me today. Uh, you know, when you and I first uh, spoke, uh, I, I immediately wanted to be associated with you and your team. I was so impressed. Right. And so I thank you for, for having me today. Yeah, so the pleasure is all ours, and we are super excited to be associated with you, Marty. Uh, now, it, there's the art of persuasion, right? And how do you really bring it into like a very scientific, almost like experimentation, uh, you know, site design, product design, like how do you really marry these two worlds together? Okay, so the, uh, the I'm gonna share um, one principle, all right, that I think really explains everything. So I'm gonna put you on the spot. I didn't know you, you I know you weren't expecting a test today, all right? <laughs> But I know. All right. So so do me a favor and describe my hand for me. OK. OK. Um, it's uh, anything like I can just no, whatever you okay. want to say. Okay. OK. 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 It's a little red. It's like got five fingers. It's it's very close to the uh, you know camera right now. I can I see very clean lines um mm. and uh feels like a good warm hand and a strong hand to you know uh, <laughs> to grab into and get a handshake in <laughs> perfect so what's interesting if i were going to describe my hand what i would have said was fingernails knuckles hair which one of us was right yeah that's a good question yeah. yeah. So here's the trick to uh, to to truly becoming a better marketer uh, for your e-commerce store. Actually, what I'm going to talk about right now, because I've talked about this, this will actually make you a better employee. It'll make you a better uh, boss. It'll make you a better uh, spouse, parent, friend, all of that. Right. And so the, the key to all of this is understanding that that true communication means understanding that whoever you're talking to, this is what they're seeing. All right, mm -hmm. you're seeing this. You first have to understand what they see before you can explain what you see. You have to acknowledge that their point of view is valid. 
Okay. And so with that in mind, think about shopping. All right. When we go into a big department store and you'll see signs everywhere, electronics this way, and maybe, you know, baby clothes that way or whatever it is. Okay. In the store, you feel like you're in control. Yeah. You feel like, oh, I'm here for this. I'm solving my problem. I had to buy new clothes for my baby or I needed to buy a new outfit for me, or I needed to buy a present for my wife or whatever it is, you're in control. You see the signs, you go to there and you don't feel like, like it's dangerous or unsafe. Compare that to, cause a lot of us have done this. You go to buy a car and when you go to buy a car and, and whether it's a new car or used car, they don't listen to you a lot of these people. They're just going to sell you whatever they're going to sell you. And they don't, you don't feel like you're in control. You don't feel safe. And this is why people hate car shopping. Okay. Unless they like playing the game. That's all another story. And, and I'm not a psychiatrist, so we can't discuss that. But being in control, making someone feel like they're in control will absolutely make a difference on, on how they perceive the site. All right. So what does that mean on a site? When someone comes to the site, you have to make it really clear that they feel comfortable about what they're looking at and they feel like they're in control. So is it okay if I show you an example of what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. no, I, I caught you. I, I lost you for a second over there, but, but uh, I caught you. Uh, okay. It, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Live stream issues, you know, we got to live with it. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I want to also kind of, you know, just one interesting, because I lost a little bit of, of, sure. of, of the last part is it, you, you brought a very good point across, right? Like when we go and we are, you know, speaking to a car, car salesman versus when we are, you know, in a department store, does it have something to do around when someone's like kind of pushing you and yep. kind of is in your face versus when you have an opportunity to make a decision? Does that that's make good. a difference? Oh yeah, that's exactly right. And then that is the key to persuasion. It's all about the visitor, okay? And making them feel comfortable. You know, a lot, most websites, um, including e-commerce sites are, uh, are very self-centered. All right. And they, they use what we call the opera school of marketing. It's like me, 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 me. It's all about me. I don't care about you. you know, but that's mm. not the way you do it. You have to make the visitor feel safe and comfortable. So you need to make it feel all about them. So, so it, which is a perfect lead on to, to a screen I'd like to share with you. All right. If I may. Yeah. So let me, let me click here. And let me know if you see a blue bungalow. Yeah, we do. Okay, so Blue Bungalow is uh, is someone that we helped. Uh, they are a nine figure a year business. All right, uh, we even have a case study about them uh, up on our website. And I want to share with you um, the most selfish page on any website, which is the About Us page. Okay, mm. now we took a month and we built this About Us page here. All right, and now imagine you're a woman in Australia. And if you read the words, the words are all about them. But if you look at how we organize this, flattering, safe place, your friend in fashion, feel confident. How do you feel? Imagine you're a woman in Australia, all right? And you come here, are you gonna feel safe and comfortable potentially you know, buying from these people, right? We've made this all about the visitor. And again, if you look at where we started, Blue Bungalow was founded to them with the vision of bringing Queensland's vibrant beach style to the rest of Australia. This is all about them. But it's founded in 2012, so you know they've been around. Women all over the world, 3,000 styles, 150 brands. By doing this, this actually increased their, their signups to their Facebook group and their email list and generated seven figures uh, overall in incremental revenue. It's all about the visitor. This is what I'm talking about. This is how you, you, you understand what they see, right? And you want yeah. to say what you want to say. This is exactly what we're talking about, making it about the visitor and not about, you know, whatever it is you want to say to people, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally, totally does. And I've never seen an about you, about us page like this before. It's always like, 
this is what who I am. This is what we do. But it's hardly about about you. It's always about yeah, me. <laughs> I, yeah, that's right. You know, and, and because most people they do their about us page like you should feel honored to talk to me, right? But no, no, we should be honored that these people took the time to learn about us, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. It's a different mindset. And when you apply those principles, not just on the about us page, but on every single page, and you make them feel comfortable and safe and know that they can trust you and you're not you know two people hiding in a cave trying to steal their credit card information and you show them that you're a real company on your e-commerce site with real personality that's what makes a difference people yeah. want to buy people don't want to be sold which goes back to the car dealership right i don't want someone to sell me a car i want to pick my car i want to buy a car no one wants to be sold. And it's the same thing on the website. Make it all about the visitor. What do they need to feel comfortable? Now, having said that, there's things that you can do to add a little extra persuasion. You can add scarcity, where you see only three left in stock. Well, that's scarcity. That is a persuasion principle to get people to take action. But here's yeah. the thing. If you, only, if you only use the persuasion principles without making the person feel comfortable, hmm. they're not going to buy. Yeah, you'll increase your conversion rate a little bit. You have to combine really caring about your visitor with these techniques. So trust symbols are, are important. And I'll tell you, for every person who is watching this, the biggest trust symbol on the face of the planet, which we have tested on, I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds of sites, is a phone hmm. number. A phone number in the top right hand corner on a desktop, okay, or the click to call icon on a mobile phone in the header, right, will increase your conversion rate by an order of magnitude, all right? And yes, it does increase phone calls, but, but if you cannot, if you cannot, um, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If you cannot, you know, answer the phone, make sure that it goes to a voicemail system where you provide lots of love, okay? You, so Emma, who's the director of marketing at Blue Bungalow, actually makes an yeah. internal joke. She actually tells people, are you giving Marty love on this page? If you're not giving Marty love, then you have to redo it, right? And so <laughs> it's all about Marty love, right? And so, so, which is not my nickname, by the way, but it's all about, you know, providing that feeling on each and every page. And so if you put a phone number up and they're calling, you want to make sure that they feel love on that call versus they answer and then just like, what do you want? We don't do that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. all right. Yeah. Anyway, I, I got carried away. I'm sorry. So. No, I love it. I love it. And, and, and that's, that's actually pretty hard because a lot of times, uh, you know, when, we, when it was only brick and mortar, at that point in time, you knew you had people around and you knew that you could either coach them to show the love or, right. you know, it, it was about great people, great salespeople who knew how yeah. to show the love, right? But, but yeah. online, it, it ends up becoming just a Craigslist sort of a site and not really that same store experience. So I think like what what could people do just today if they have to get started? Like I, I don't have a store. I literally have a Craigslist and I need to do like three things or five things to add Marty Love to my to my store. So how, how do I go about doing that? The first thing is you want to understand who's coming to your to your site. All right. And so, for example, um, it's all about the demographic. So if your clientele comes to the site and they are, you know, 18 to 25, you're going to speak to them differently than you would somebody who is in their 60s plus, right? And so you need to understand who's coming because you write differently for people, all right? Yeah. Uh, you also, and, and this is even in Google Analytics, if your audience is, is skewed female or male, all right, you got to ask yourself, it, 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 you know, based on who's coming, is it written for women or is it written for men? Because we do think differently and I'm not being sexist, all right? We are different, okay? And different doesn't mean worse or better or anything. It's just different. So, so you want to appeal to that person who's coming to your site. You want to write for your visitor, okay? Yes. And so you use different words. You also use different colors, all right? I, I make a joke. We, we once did a site for... Um, for uh, industrial generators, where you could buy industrial generators. These, 
These are basically, these generators would go into warehouses. Our audience was basically fat old men who sat in an office smoking a cigar, okay? We, I mean, I'm not exact. So, so did we create a beautiful site for them? No, mm. we created something that appealed to fat old men sitting in a, in a garage, right? And or having cigars. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? So you really want to make the, the site, the words and the aesthetics appeal to the audience that you're going after, right? Yeah. And so, um, so really understanding your audience is key. Yeah. Understanding what problem they're trying to solve, okay? Because if, if you're selling a widget, you could say, here, buy my widget. Or if you know the problem they're trying to solve, you could say, this widget solves this, you know, are you, are you struggling with smoking too many cigars, right? I don't know what it is. Are you yeah. struggling with smoking with too many cigars? You know, is it, uh, is it, is it, is your breath bad because of it? I'm making this up, right? Whatever it is. I love no it. Worries. Here's magic cigar breath yeah. mint, whatever it is, right? And yeah. Because you're addressing the exact problem. It's not about buy my stuff. It's about what problem does your product or service solve for that visitor? And who is that visitor? And how do I write for them? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. And by the way, it applies to everybody. I think these are like notes that me and Ria should take back for us too. It's about always about the person on the other side and, and this side and that side and making sure we are on the same page. Uh, in interest of time, we already have a few questions. Also, whoever is on the call, uh, you know, if you want uh, to put in your questions on the chat box, please do that. Uh, uh, but I'm going to quickly jump on to a couple of questions that are uh, some of our, uh, you know, audience have already shared with us, Marty. Uh, so I'm going to go one by one. Uh, sure. Yeah, what are what are some of your favorite books to learn about persuasion? Actually, that's a good one. I want to know that too. <laughs> well, I, 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 you know, I, I'm not, I can't help myself, but so I just wrote this book. Okay, <laughs> Which, you know, I mean, in fairness, all right. So, True Connections: Relationship Marketing in the Digital World, um, and it's up on Amazon and so on. And this is really how we think about it, all right. And it talks yeah. about the three questions and everything else. But I will tell you the two books that I've read that aren't my book. Okay, that I, I think are incredibly valuable. And this is going to be really bizarre. Okay, let's start there. The first book is an oldie but goodie. It's How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale mm -hmm. Carnegie. All right. Mm -hmm. And I read that just like it, it, that book really changed a, a lot of how I approach people. And, and you really are supposed to read that book over and over again every year because we are basically, and this is going to sound terrible, people, but we're basically animals. 50,000 years ago, we were, our ancestors were in a cave eating our hunk of meat. Everything was about survival, right? And so every, we're selfish. We are just literally selfish. We can't help it. And so we treat each other from this perspective of what we need and what we want. And that book really makes you look at the other person and what they need and what they want. And I apply a lot of those principles on the websites that we work with. So Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People is, a, is one of my favorites. Then the book that absolutely changed my life, okay, was uh, by uh, a woman, uh, Beverly DeAngelis. She's uh, got her PhD. And uh, her book's title is what, I believe it's What Women Want Men to Know. All right. Mm, and, I've heard about and, that. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it's kind of like the uh, men are from Mars, uh, as women are from Venus, but it's so much better. And and I will tell you when I read this book, and it's about twenty years ago when I read this, I got through the first few page, the first seventy pages, and I, I was VP of marketing for another company, and I read through this, and I'm like, oh my god, women can't possibly be this dysfunctional. And I said, that's really weird. So I asked the women I work with, do you do this? And they're like, yeah, we do. Do you do this? Yeah. And then I read further and I went, oh my God, men can't possibly be this dysfunctional. And we are, okay? Oh my yeah. God. Men and women are equally dysfunctional, but in different ways, okay? Mm -hmm. And that book, once you understand how men and women actually think, and it's not black and white, there's a spectrum of people, all right? There are men who are more feminine, women who are more masculine, and people in between. There's all sorts of things, but, but understanding the basic premises, and once you identify how a person is, treating a person with respect and, and, and talking to them 
based on their personality and who they are is, is, is life changing and life affirming for people. And so yes. what I took away from that book was, was, was truly an understanding of how different we all are. And, and you can apply those principles again to what you do on your website. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true, right? Yeah, yeah. And of course, no. I'll, I'll circle back the first book again. It's Relationship Marketing by Marty. So make sure you get that too. <laughs> the second question is, is online persuasion different? And then how do you do it in the offline work? So interestingly enough, um, so online and, and by online and offline, I'm going to assume they mean, I shouldn't, but I'm going to assume what they mean is they're on my website versus maybe email marketing versus something where they're not quite there because the other offline might be in person, right? And so exactly. I'm not really sure yeah. which one they're asking for. So so online, it's it, because they don't know anything about you. you. When you structure a page, the structure is what it is at a high level, okay? Followed by a call to action and near every call to action is trust. Then the trust could be, you know, uh, anything from serving clients worldwide, over a million clients worldwide, you know, uh, you know, money back guarantees, testimonials, whatever the trust is. And so the structure of a page when you're doing this should be the correct structure for uh, a page is what it is, call to action, call to action is always followed by trust, or you can have the trust followed by the call to action. Hmm. Then you go deeper, more hmm. detail on whatever the thing is, followed by trust. But again, it's now it's a different trust. If you use symbols like guarantees, free shipping, whatever it is, the next trust might be um, might be testimonials, hmm. followed by a call to action. And then if you have to go deeper, because some people need more, and, and you just keep repeating that sequence of three things, which is what it is at either high, medium, or lower levels followed by trust or call to action, and they can be swapped. And as long as you have different trust, so you're not repeating the same trust over and over and over again, um, that really makes it a, a, a high conversion um, yeah. page all right, or funnel. All right, and so that works. In, in your, I'll call it semi-offline, which is like your email you know, marketing or you know, um, something where they're not on your website, um, again, it's the same principles. It, it's especially in email. It's all about them. We've all seen where we've written emails to each other and you get so angry that somebody wrote to that email, but they didn't mean what, what, how you read it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's really hard. So again, it's the same principle. It's about them. It's, it's, it's gotta be clear what you want them to do. All right. And it's gotta have trust. And then obviously offline. All right. If it's truly in person, I, I will tell you, um, and this is maybe my quirk, but I love people. All right. I, I find people fascinating. I talk to everybody. I can't, I can't even get in a taxi without talking to the taxi driver, finding out their life story. No, I love people. So, yeah. it, so if you, if you, uh, and if you, if you believe that everybody has value, okay. Mm -hmm. And that you, you, you can help everybody and, and, and you have that connection. It works. I mean, I'll go a step further. I'm on the board of directors. For um, uh, for an organization that works with 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 people who are are mentally challenged, okay, and we provide services. I do that free because yeah. I care about everybody. And so, find your passion and find your passion in all people, and that good things happen. That's all. All right. Yeah. Sorry, I got carried away again. <laughs> no, but that's that's what makes you you. Uh, so, it, the, the, but but I think that's so true. Like I find it very interesting how you are saying that layer your trust and your uh, you know the your persuasion nudges across, mm -hmm. and don't think about it almost like a. I did it once and I'm done, but it's actually as you're reading, you got to continue to kind of like reinforce it, right? I think that that's that's the takeaway for me. I hope that answer helps. Uh, the third question is interesting. I think it's more about like targeting it for different visitor types. So cold leads, hot leads, new versus uh, returning, uh, you know, customers, etc. cetera. Uh, of course, I assume the persuasion type and how you uh, convince them or how you continue to convince them has to change. So I think the question is like, how do you do that? Okay, so I'm gonna start with crawl, walk, run, all right? Mm -hmm. So most people are not at the stage where they can do the personalization. Now we do do that for folks, all right? Yeah. And personalization yeah. absolutely makes a difference. Um, but starting with, let's assume there's none of that yet. 
Hmm. Let's at least try to uh, appeal to the, 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 the group, the masses of everybody. Then you might have some paths that people could follow. And the path might be, you know, let's say you are, you are, um, and I'll make up, it's for e-commerce. Let's say we're selling, you know, um, a walker for someone who is aged, right? Yeah. And yeah. so, uh, so you might have, are you looking for a walker for your parents, right? Mm -hmm. or, 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 or an elderly friend or relative versus are you looking for a walker for yourself? So now what we're doing is we're giving a pass for the person who's buying it for themselves versus mm -hmm. somebody who's buying it for, you know, somebody they care about. Or there could be a third. Are you buying it for your, for your facility, right? So, so one way of doing it, if you can't identify the targets, and there's ways to do that too, but if you can't identify the targets, is to create paths for people so that you can answer the questions that they would care about, which is a little different. You know, it may be similar, but it's not quite the same. The, the, the person who's going to use it might have slightly different questions than the person who's buying it for their parent, all right? And yeah. so that's one way to do it. The next level to do it is it absolutely, you know, if you can, you should always treat, um, you know, new versus returning visitors differently if you can, with the understanding that you don't always know that your visitors are new, all right? They may be returning people who have cleared their cookies or, or you know, they're coming from, you know, an iPhone or there's something going on where yeah. you don't really know who they are. So you, you have to give them the, the option potentially of, you know, uh, been here before, you know, or whatever, or give them an option to log in, all right? So that's the next level. The further level to go down, and there's plenty of tools that do this, and depending upon what you're selling, you can actually glean a lot of information from people, um, not just from cookies, but from IP addresses, all right? And mm -hmm. so if you use some type of IP address level software, uh, and there's all sorts of, of services out there, you'll know that they're coming from this company versus at home. Now, again, just because I come from home, it might be I still work for Ford Motor Company or IBM, but I happen to be working from home, right? And so, you know, my IP address is going to show my home. So again, you can assume, and that's why it's always nice to have those paths that you can follow for the different kinds of visitors. But you can, you can, you know, preempt some of that if you do know they're returning, if you do know what their IP address is and you're using that. But I'm going to go back to crawl, walk, run. Most people are at the crawl stage, okay, that yeah. we see. You know, very few people are doing that level of personalization. So, so know who they're coming, create paths. That's the simplest thing you can do. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and, and what I like about what you're saying, Marty, is that it actually also uh, it's the same thing that you were uh, you know, talking about at the beginning of our conversation is you're giving the person the ability to make a choice and it's mm -hmm. again not like forced the personalization is not necessarily forced on them so even even if you are i guess you are at the run stage having mm -hmm. some sort of you know paths and nudges that helps them redefine mm -hmm. where they feel they are might also mm -hmm. be an interesting kind of like a you know um a ability for people to feel more in control Absolutely. And it goes back to the three questions. Am I in the right place? How do I feel about this? What am I supposed to do here? Am I in the right place? If I see something where they're talking to me, it's like, oh my God, they're talking to me. I'm in the right place. How do I feel about this? Well, I feel pretty good right now. What am I supposed to do? Oh, go down this path. It answers all three questions. So true. So true. There's uh, the final one. And then uh, uh, guys, if you have any more questions, audience, please, please share it. We can't keep Marty forever. I know you guys have a lot of questions, but at some point we'll have to, uh, you know, let him get along with the rest of his day. But the, this question is like my personal favorite uh, because I always find like visual cues very exciting. I don't like not necessarily like reading a lot of different things all the time, specifically not when I'm shopping. So the question is that how effective are visual cues versus like a lot of different text or paragraphs that you can use when you are trying to persuade, uh, you know, your uh, shoppers across the funnel? Okay, so interestingly enough, that varies by country, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we've tested this too. Uh, so 
Uh, visual cues are always important and always worthwhile. And so some of the things that you want to do is you want to make sure that your call to action color, you know, whether it's a button or whatever you're doing, is only used for that. It might be an accent color that you're using just a little bit, but don't overuse that color. It needs to pop, you know, and you have you want to use colors very specifically. You want to be very careful on using animation because animation and movement actually can lower conversion. We've tested that over and over and over again, all right? But back to the text issue, and I'll use three countries as an example. I'll use the United States, um, England, and Australia because they all speak English, kind of, right? And so we can argue about that. In the ballpark. Um, yeah, somewhere. Uh, so, so here's the thing. Americans don't read anywhere near as much as people in the UK do. So if you take an American site, because we're the land of instant gratification, all right, we know literally we are, um, you know, our site will convert well for us, but it won't convert well in the UK because they want more information versus in a UK site. If you take a UK site where it's heavy in text and you bring it to the United States, those people are going to be bored out of their bird and, and not convert. And believe it or not, Australia is in the middle between the two. And we've tested, this is kind of like personalization, but it's yeah. really understanding your target audience. And so the question of how much text really has to go back to your, your, your website and your visitor and the culture that you're selling to. Now, having said that, as I said, we're a spectrum. People are not you know, I'm this or I'm that. It's not black and white. There is a spectrum of people. So even in the United States, when we structure a website, we structure it with high level stuff. And there's a path for those of us who want to learn more, they can go down and learn more. But for those who want instant gratification, they can do that. And so you can have paths where they can learn more and more and more for those people who are no fun at a party. No, I'm just joking. All right, but if you... But, but if you if you, there are those people who need absolutely every detail and you have to provide it, but you cannot provide every detail for those people who just want, just want to buy it. Right. So you have to structure it with layers. Yeah. Hopefully that I didn't, hopefully that was uh, not no, too. No, wrong. Okay. no I, I think that totally makes sense. And I mean, it's been a, just a short 30 minutes or 25 minutes. I'm not sure anymore, but honestly, it's so, such a wealth of information, Marty. This was, incredible thank you so so much for you know being here um i'm sure we have oh we have one final question ria do we have time or shall we uh take it up later uh, it's whatever you want to do yeah i think we can pick up just one last oh, awesome awesome so this is the last question what do you think about predictive audiences in ga4 so the whole GA4 thing is, is uh, if let me start with, if you haven't already started moving to GA4, please don't wait until, uh, it, it, you know, till Google Analytics go away. So predictive audiences um, will be really good. GA4 in general is about um, engagement as opposed to Google Analytics is about events. So, so if you think of, of GA4 as being, um, uh, you know, an engagement level um, uh, analytics to know that people are engaging, which is what Google has been talking about for quite a while, being to predict how people might be able to engage and what's going to attract people is absolutely, you know, the direction we're going. There's a really good conference. Actually, let me back up. So in, in Vegas in June, there's two conferences that are back to back at the same time. One is our conference, it's the conversion conference, okay? And the other one is Marketing Analytics Summit. At Marketing Analytics Summit, which is not our conference, but they have a whole workshop on GA4. And if you're serious about GA4, and if you can go to Vegas in June, I would strongly recommend going to that workshop. I'm even sending one of my people to it, all right? So it, it looked that good, right? Um, and if you want to learn more about conversion, you can obviously go to the to our conversion conference. I'll put the plug in. Why not? Right. Yeah. Uh, and this, this June. All right. But having said that, um, predictives are, are, are off the charts important or will become even more off the charts important because, again, Google is going to be rewarding or giving Google love to sites that engage the visitor more, right? And so, so the more you can engage the visitor where they, they stay on your site, they engage with it, they click from page to page, they take action, you will wind up with more SEO love as well as higher conversions. So yeah. I'm sorry, I was 
kind of a no. Long I, short, I, I can't to... answer short a short. I cannot answer anything with a short answer. My <laughs> but but that's Marty love. So and and we love it. <laughs> Thank you so much. This was incredibly insightful. And I think every every uh, you know little nugget that we spoke about literally could be like twenty different blog posts. But we uh, audience we got we got at least one. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. We, we will be sharing the recording and Marty's actually going to put together a blog guest blog with all the details. So don't worry. Don't worry. We got you. And uh, so excited. Thank you so much. And this was this was incredible and hope to bring you back again uh, sometime soon. So so that's it for day three. I uh, hope you guys have learned a ton. I, 